Hi everybody, welcome to a new edition of Let's Talk About Education with Antonio Corrales. We have talked in this show before about what does it mean to be a manager in educational institution. What does it mean to be in charge of educational programs and help students to be successful in their careers. But what does it mean to transition from the classrooms to administration? What does it mean to become an administrator for the first time? Well, today we have the honor to have with us Dr. John Deckman who is a seasoned educator, seasoned administrator, education, uh, university professor, and he's gonna tell us in simple terms, what does it mean to transition from the classrooms to administration? John, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. Absolutely. Why don't we start by, John, by uh, letting you introduce yourself to the audience and kind of letting them know how do you get to where you are in your career? Well, way back when I graduated, uh, with a degree in English teaching from Purdue University, and I was a high school English teacher, and I coached a variety of sports for several years, and then I got the call and went over to quote unquote the dark side, and I became <laughs> an assistant principal, and uh, was very very blessed. Uh, quickly thereafter, became a high school principal. Uh, very blessed to have served under three remarkable superintendents uh -huh. who. Uh, took my professional growth very personally. Uh, the, the first superintendent I worked with, I made some off-the-cuff statement to him about missing the intellectual purging that takes place in a graduate school classroom. And three days later, we were in a car headed to his alma mater, where he introduced me to his professors, and I began my PhD program. And so they, they really supported me through the uh, entire experience. And uh, after I finished uh, my doctorate, I uh, had some career decisions to make, and I ended up uh, choosing to be here at uh, Houston Clear Lake uh -huh. back in 2001. Uh -huh. And I've been remarkably fortunate here to have seen literally thousands mm -hmm. of practicing administrators here in the greater Houston area. Uh, been blessed that uh, two of my former students are college professors in this state. One of them runs his own principalship program nice. in this state. And uh, it's, uh, again, I'm gonna use the word, it's, it's a true blessing to have had uh, the opportunity to play a role in so many lives and have so many lives play a role in mine. That's fantastic. Now, John, you are in charge of the uh, certification program for principals here in the university. You have successfully uh, gone through a uh, application process, a reapplication process this past year uh, in terms of uh, getting approved by the state to become a, a, a provider in terms of certification uh, for, for principals. What can you tell us about certification programs for principals? Because there's a lot of offers out there in the market and there's a lot of uh, uh, different, uh, of, you know, opportunities that uh, that uh, teachers are offered, uh, but what what does it entail to go through a, a principal certification process? What are what are the aspects that that are commonly co covered in in those uh, initiatives? Well, in the state of Texas, they changed the certificate from a principal certificate to principal as instructional leader cert certificate. At Houston Clear Lake, we looked at that as an opportunity to really ramp up what we do to help prepare our people to be better leaders and better servants to their teachers and the students in their districts. So we approached it as, uh, as an opportunity and not as, uh, not as another hurdle that we have to do, okay? And as a result of that, we have created a program that we're really kind of proud of. Mm -hmm. It's a, essentially, it's eight administration supervision courses. Mm -hmm. Four of them prepare you for the two, first test. Mm -hmm. You take two courses and then your last two are a year-long practicum experience. Mm -hmm. And our students graduate, or our students are certified with every certificate they need to be turnkey administrators. They don't get hired and then have to take a week off to go get AEL certification and then go have to take another week off to get T-test or how to appraise teacher certification. They get everything. Everything is built into our program mm -hmm. along with all eight of those courses, obviously the practicum courses, but the six that precede it have 
significant field experiences built into them so that when our candidates sit in an interview, they can distinguish themselves from every other applicant for the position because not only can they talk about the research behind what is solid administration, what is solid leadership, but they can provide details about what they did, who they helped, how were they servant leaders, whose lives they changed, and what's the data that supports that. Well, and one thing that, that correct me if, if I'm wrong, but I think one thing that you incorporated recently was a whole year of an internship Right, program. we went from a one semester to a two semester internship. And, and, and explain to the viewers, to potential teachers who are looking at us right now that they may be thinking about pursuing a, a, a principal certification, why that is a, a good thing, it's an important thing for them instead of going from only six months internship, going through an entire year of internship? Our motivation is we want our people to be the most successful people who are in practice right now. Uh, and we have invested a tremendous amount of time and energy at that. Uh, the one semester internship gives someone a limited amount of experience over four months of a school year. The two semester internship, that year long internship, there are certain things that happen in January and February that never happen in September and October. There are certain things that happen in April and May that never happen in November and December. And we want our students to, when the rubber really hits the road, to when they're being paid to do the job, mm -hmm. to be the person, to be the leader in the school. We want to have them feel that very little is at risk, that they've already seen it, they've already done it, they've already had an opportunity to reflect upon it and grow from it, so that their decisions are much more thought out, reflective decisions. That's fantastic, because that way the, the, the uh, potential principals or assistant principals are gonna be exposed to what's, what can happen in the school. Now, in your opinion, since you have gone through this and you have done this for many years, what are the components that make a principal certification program a, 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 a successful or an effective one? What are the things, the general aspect that you can say, okay, this, this is a, a program that is effective and can help uh, uh, potential principals to be successful? I think it's awful tough to manage that mm -hmm. while candidates are in the program. Mm -hmm. I think the best way to assess it is when your people get hired, what are they doing? Our school's changing. Uh, I've been here for 18 years. We've been serving the same 45 or 61 districts, however you want to draw the map, for 18 years. We are uh, fortunate that there are districts in Houston where 75 to 80 percent of their building level administrators are our graduates. Several superintendents in this area are our people. Uh, they recommend their teachers come to us. Uh, yeah, we have a, a wonderful partnership with Aleaf ISD. 75% of their administrators are our people. Ours are the people who get hired in that district, mm -hmm. which means somebody who is not necessarily related to us thinks that our people are the change makers. Mm -hmm. Our people are the ones that care about the teachers and care about the students and care about measurable student growth and growing their communities. Mm -hmm. No, that's fantastic. I, and I agree with you. I think. I think the reputation from U of H in terms of the in terms of education and educational management is tremendous. Now, for some teachers that may be looking at us right now, and let's say that they had never had previous management experience uh, in any any capacity, you know, because sometimes you know we have alternative alternative certification programs where teachers come from other careers and they have been managers in other fields. But let's say that we have a, a teacher who has always been a teacher, has always been an educator, and is looking at us right now, and maybe is trying to visit the idea of becoming an administrator. Uh, what can you tell us about that transition from teaching to administra administration, and how can a person make that transition a successful one, even though may not have previous management experience? In from, your experience. from teacher to principal or to assistant oh, to principal? assistant principal. All right. To administration. Yeah, there, there's a whole lot of research out there that says a person can never be an effective leader if the task orientation is not being taken care of. Mm -hmm. Okay. If if uh, 
through whatever reason, if it's personal leadership or distributed leadership, if the raw tasks, you know, which is oftentimes the duties of an assistant principal, are not being taken care of, then the person who sits in the big office with the two doors in the private bathroom isn't going to be much of a leader because tasks aren't getting done. Exactly. Okay, so when you leave the classroom, uh, you're leaving that 900 square foot room, that 30 by 30 square with the five rows of five desks, and you you see the world from a very different point of view. Now I'll argue if you're not comfortable in your classroom, if you don't feel like you do an effective job in the classroom, then then it's probably not a good jump to leadership. Correct. Because if you can't master instruction, then it's going to be very difficult to ask others That's to. That's a great point. That Can you elaborate on that? Because a lot of teachers may be thinking, well, I'm going to make more money uh, as, as an administrator, but if you're not successful taking care of your classroom, your probability to succeed as an administrator is really, is really small, right? Right. You're still dealing with people. Exactly. They can be three feet tall or seven foot three. You're still <laughs> dealing with people. Exactly. And a very difficult way to measure an effective teacher is the affect. You know, to what extent does a teacher really truly care about student learning? Uh, leadership is the same way. It's just the people happen to be a little bit bigger. To what extent does a principal really, truly care about the growth of everybody in that building, including the teachers? And that's not a measurable. And if you don't have it with the three-footers, I doubt that you'll have it with the six-footers. And like you said, even in the classroom, there's a lot of management skills that you can transfer to... Oh, absolutely. To, absolutely. Yeah. You're running your own show. All right. Uh, at some point in time when you become an administrator, if you are effective in the classroom, you've got to go home and come to grips with not everybody in your building is effective. Mm -hmm. And what qualifies as professional behavior in your mind is not the same level that qualifies in everyone else's. And then that's an opportunity for change. That's an opportunity for people to feel uncomfortable and to grow from that discomfort. Because quite honestly, discomfort is what makes us grow. Exactly. Yeah. Now, where can, based on your experience, when can you tell, or where can a teacher who is looking at us right now, when do you, when, when, is, when is the moment that you say, or a teacher can say, okay, I'm ready to jump? Do oh, I don't know that there is a moment. Okay. I don't, I think there's, uh, it's like saying, when are you ready to be a parent? You're never ready <laughs> to be a parent. Exactly. You know? Uh, so that's a good point because some people may think, okay, when I reach this, I don't know, five years of experience or ten years, and it may not be that way. It may, it's not linear what you're saying. Basically, you're going to have to make a decision, basically. Yeah, at some point in time, you have to know yourself well enough to say, I'm willing to risk based on what I know about me. Because there's a tremendous amount of safety and security in a classroom. Good. That's right. And when you leave that classroom, a lot of that safety and security disappears. Mm -hmm. And there are people in our world who don't care who you are, but the fact that you hold that position, that you have that authority, that positional authority, makes you a bad guy. You jump to the dark side. You, know, you exactly. join Darth Vader and all of those marching people because <laughs> you're no longer a teacher. Exactly. And to be successful, you truly have to model those reflective servant type skills mm -hmm. that made you successful in the classroom. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Now, another topic that is, I think it's important for us to talk about is that a lot of, um, the one job that had a lot of uh, bad rapport, in my opinion, based on what I've talked to a lot of people, based on the job, is the assistant principal job. A lot of a lot of people are really scared of being an assistant principal, or also hesitant because they see the position as a, so in some cases of a key carrier, uh, as a locker locker room, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, supervisor, uh, disciplinarian, uh, boss, uh, transportation uh, monitor. Um, however, if you look at research. Uh, in most uh, jobs uh, that principals acquire or even central office acquire, most of the jobs go have gone through assistant principalships. Mm -hmm. 
Um, why can't you tell us about is is it a, is it a, is it a, is it an assumption is it a wrong assumption for people to be uh, scared about that job per se and is it a necessary step to move forward as an administrator is it 100 necessary no is it an assumption yes it's a tradition uh, there is no denying that the assistant principal position is in some cases the second step because now we have these academic coach things mm -hmm that are quasi-administrative positions uh, that exist in a lot of our larger districts. Right. Okay, well, I'm going to pay you as a teacher but demand administrative responsibilities. Right. Okay, And we have a lot of people in our program that want those positions and therefore are, are certified as inst uh, principal's instructional leader as a result of that. Uh, the, to answer your question, the position is where the rubber hits the road about your ability to manage because the assistant principal position is largely a management position. Now we're trying to get away from that a little bit in Texas. We're trying to, through the new certifications and the, the big emphasis on instructional leadership, we're trying to distribute that instructional leadership down from just the principal to all of the assistants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that does not negate the management tasks that are inherently associated with being an assistant principal. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you strive for that line position uh, in management, then yeah, this is definitely the first step in the line position in, in the chain of command. Now, to throw a little extra, extra item there for our viewers, even if we set up, Probably a current assistant principal or new assistant principal that is starting the job. What recommendations do you have for them uh, if they want to be exposed to uh, aspects of the job that usually uh, and commonly assistant principals are not exposed? For example, budgeting or or, or uh, mostly academic tasks that sometimes the principals take over. What would you recommend those assistant principals looking at us right now to do? to uh, slowly but steadily be exposed to those aspects of the job they're going to prepare them to become a, a principal? I think assistant principals oftentimes get overwhelmed with the management tasks, yeah. the discipline, and, and all of that kind of stuff. My, my best advice is August and September is to be in classrooms all the time because I think, and, and I'm sure we can find research to, to prove this, the amount of time that principals and assistant principals spend in the classroom as instructional leaders at the beginning of the year relates directly to the amount of time that they don't have to spend with discipline and those types of issues. And if you're not overwhelmed with those management type issues, you now have the time to look to grow professionally in these other areas. That makes sense. But if you don't have the time, then you'll never get the budget because you've got a stack of student disciplinary referrals that's three inches thick and they've got to be out by two o'clock today or this meeting or that meeting or this meeting or that meeting. Whereas if you have a concerted effort with your administrative team to change the content of the conversation on your campus to that of being about instruction and that we value instruction and what's going on in the classroom, there's no better way of showing that than being in the classroom. Uh, a whole lot of problems go away. Exactly. And here we are in February, and you and I can walk through any school and be pretty close to right all the time about how often those administrators were in classrooms in August and September exactly. by what's going on in February and March and April. Exactly. Amazing. Really good tip. Now, John, for those who teachers who are looking at us right now and are currently busy in the idea of either becoming an instructional leader in a, class, in a campus or becoming an assistant principal or a principal and are busy in the idea of going to a, a principal certification program, what recommendation do you have for, for, for them uh, uh, about moving forward? I, I think a lot of that is introspection. Why do you want to do it? Uh, there are upwards of 50 to 60 different educational program providers in the state of Texas. Uh, and some are remarkably successful, while others aren't. And, and I'm not here to bash anybody. Uh, I am proud in all of the right ways about what we do. Uh, 
if you truly want to make that difference, then then treat graduate school the way graduate school needs to be treated. Then then be prepared to be uncomfortable. Be prepared to be reflective. Be prepared to question a lot of the whys and whats, and to learn and to grow, and and to do it with. Uh, it sounds a little cliche with the servant's heart, mm -hmm. because that's what makes a difference with people, and we're in the people business. And that's a great point because a lot of teachers may be thinking, well, if I um, become an administrator, I'm gonna get get away from the, the students, the kids, and I'm gonna feel that empty. When in reality, you all you, you're gonna have more kids than you used yes. to have in your classroom. You never go away from the kids. And that's another way of assessing administrators. You know, walk down the hallway with an administrator. How many student names can that administrator right. say hello to? Yeah, that tells you an awful lot about the culture and the climate mm -hmm. that's going on in that school. Okay. Well, that's fantastic, man. That's awesome. John, I want to thank you one more time for being with us today. Our viewers out there, remember that we have this interview and many others in Antonio Corrales' YouTube channel. Let's talk about location with Antonio Corrales in AustraliaEvaluationAssessment.com. Please help somebody today and see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.